Also, Ijtihad in the old days was lo mainly jurist would make Ijtihad and would be maybe be a matter of law. Okay, you need a, a problem. You have some problem here. Um, we need to solve it. And so they would go to the scholar or the jurist and he would give a fatwa and, and pass a ruling. What we are finding now is that because you're living in a society and so in order to function and get the best way of existing as Muslims, we've got to include other kinds of input, not just law-based input. And so a lot of the, the new thinking is that we need to have more creativity involved in, in Ijtihad. So a lot of the scholars recommend we need to have the poets, the comedians, the musicians. We also need to have specialists in the field of medicine and law and, and engineering and, and economics. Because what had happened in the old days was that you would go to the scholar and he, you're asking him to give a fatwa on something economic. And he's not an economic expert. He's not a medical expert. And you're asking him to make a decision. What Islam says about organ transplant or what Islam says about um, gender sex change. And the scholar who's not learned in the issues of medicine don't quite know what to say about these issues. So now Ijtihad has taken a new direction in which we have a battery of consultants. So we'll consult the specialists in medicine, consult the specialists in economics. So the scholar would go and get their ruling from these people of what the issue about that is before they just issue fatwas. And so they need to have an input of a variety of people. You know, we live in a times now where for the Muslims, the comedians are more popular than the scholars. And we've got to ask ourselves why. It is because there is some relevance to them. And, and you cannot just dismiss those kind of input. And so the new thinking in terms of which they had is to be able to um, involve all of these people. We've also got to grapple with uh, these are some of the challenges of which they had. Uh, we're living in a, in a time because of that 500 stagnation, we're placed in a very bad place in which our young people, they're being asked to make a decision between choosing modernity and Islam because Islam is presented and practiced in such a backward looking form that our young people look and says, I either become a modern person or I become a Muslim person because Islam is seen as backward. Its rules and principles and laws and regulations seem as restrictive. And so for the young person in the West growing up with all the freedom they have, they find it difficult because they are being asked to make a decision between one and the other. Whereas the reality of it should be that when they choose Islam, they should, it should make them the most modern person. Unfortunately, it's not being presented like that. And it's not, we haven't gotten to that. That's a challenge we still have. And that's why you find Muslims branching out and calling themselves all kinds of names. Women groups branching out and forming their own thing. Modernist Muslim. You have, you know, you have the, the revival, all kinds of different groups because they're thinking that Islam is not providing that. They need to create their own. And so we, that challenge we have to be able to overcome in terms of how do you, when you practice Islam, you are as modern and relevant as anyone else. The challenge of women still, the status of women is still a big issue within our communities. And um, we still haven't got it totally right. So those are challenges of Ijtihad, which our scholars today will have to now try to, to go and figure out. Another challenge we have, Ijtihad about Sunni Shia relations. If you ask any Muslim, Sunni Muslim, what is the correct relationship with Shia? None of us could say it. We don't know what it is. Do we think to think of these people as non-Muslims? How do we deal with them? And you know, those are challenges in which the current day scholars of us have to, to deal with and come up with new solutions of which they had so that we could get past some of these. These are current modern day issues that we are grappling with. Relationship between Muslim and non-Muslim, because we are living in pluralistic societies where we are the minority and non-Muslim is the majority. How do you what kind of relationship are we supposed to have with them? Do we look at them as the kafir that we need to hate? Or do we in integrate with them? And how much politics we could get involved with, with their politics? Or, you know, for years, Muslims kept away from journalism and media and, and law because they felt it was a kafir thing to do. 
to, to get involved in that. All of that stuff, we've got to be able to develop new rulings and new concepts of how we deal with that. Islamic economic theories, they're still too uh, biased and very narrow-minded. And so we've got to be able to come up with proper economic theories that will facilitate Muslim Muslims have, feel, have felt for a long time that they cannot get up economically if they practice Islam. Because the, 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 the society, the way the economics is set up, it's set up to deprive the Muslim. We can't participate in riba, we can't participate in so many things, but we are not providing the solutions and the opportunities and new ways of how we could function and thrive in an economic society that is run by non-Muslims. The issue of the masjid, we still have issues with how we design the masjid, how we make the masjid, uh, what is the purpose and role of the masjid, uh, to make them places where there are beacons of light for the young people, where they have the facility and, and it's youth friendly and are designed as a community center. All of that remains challenge of which they had that our scholars have to grapple with. The concept of global ummah, I have a woman there, but versus nation states. See, the Muslims used to be considered as one ummah. You could have traveled any part of the Muslim world and you don't need a passport for every country. But then when we got colonized, now we became nation states. Every one of us, we said, I'm Egyptian now. You are a Jordanian, you know. And that is why it becomes easy for uh, one country to attack another country because they see them as different. You know, whereas that not, not used to be our concept. Our concept was, we are a global ummah. And everywhere you go, you're accepted once you belong to the Muslim ummah. And you're welcomed. And you're not treated as if, oh, are you Egyptian? Are you Pakistani? Are you Guyanese? You know, and treat us as difference. We have got to get back to selling that global, the concept of global ummah to our ummah and let them understand so that we don't have the hatred and the segregation that we do. Institutions, as I mentioned before, we need to produce all kinds of institutions that will produce scholars relevant to our needs and be able to, to come up with creative solutions to, to deal with all the issues that we face. And so those are some of the challenges of Ijtihad that now persist. But the reality is we unfortunately have this big deal of figuring out how to catch up. After 500 years of dormancy and stagnation, we are now trying to play catch up. And that is why you would notice that even though Islam is the best and it is from Allah and anybody who practices it is supposed to be the in the leadership, striving, thriving over all other systems. As Allah said, that He sent that Allah has sent the messenger with the religion of truth and the guidance in order that it may supersede and be transparent over all other ways. We don't find that. We find that somehow we are at the bottom end of the totem pole. You know, and so it is because of this stagnation that we had and so we've got to have now this renewed effort of alhamdulillah the spirit of ijtihad has now begun again in full strife and i figure that you know within the next hundred years the muslims hopefully will be able to get back on track so all of us now need to embrace the idea of getting new tafsirs getting new ideas not just following blindly and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to get that and so i'm um, sorry